Last week I danced on top of a giant rubber duck DJ. No, I'm not back on the mushrooms. I was playing Foam Stars, which is a similarly colourful and fun trip. Yeah! Game on! Square Enix's bubble patched team based shooter is bursting with character and style, while frequently managing to maintain a tense competitive edge. While not all of its launch modes hit home for me, I found myself pleasantly surprised at just how much fun I was having after four hours of hands on time. Foam Stars will launch with multiple modes available, of which most are centered on multiplayer. The one exception is Foam Stars PvE offering, which is playable in both solo and co-op, and consists of fighting against waves of randomized enemies to achieve the highest score. While I only played one of these missions once, I can't see it being where many will sink their time into. Instead, the meat of this shooter is found in its three PvP modes. Smash the Star is presented as Foam Stars Signature Mode, where two teams of four battle it out, deathmatch style, until they reach seven eliminations at which point an opponent's star player is crowned. This player is buffed with increased health and damage output, making them formidable on the bubble field. But once a star player is taken down, the match is over. It's a genuinely fun time, and when teams are balanced, it can get really tense. As fights go down to the wire and the risk-reward nature of attacking your opponent and defending your star player comes to the fore. First impressions may be to dismiss Foam Stars as a Splatoon clone, but after playing it I found its hero shooter DNA became much more apparent. Yes, painting the floor with your team's foam colour aids movement, enabling you to surf along the perpetually changing floor with ease, but points aren't awarded for how much territory you occupy. While I had fun with Smash the Star, my favourite favorite mode without a doubt is Rubber Duck Party. Teams of four battle it out to capture a wildly oversized rubber duck and escort it as far as they can towards the other team's spawn point. It's essentially Overwatch 2's push mode, and its objective-based focus spoke to those Overwatch sensibilities within me. That isn't all though, the duck is also a DJ, and if you climb on top of his shiny yellow head and manage to dance for a few seconds without being foamed up, it shoots forward at speed, pushing you further towards your team's destination. It's a nice little touch that once again encourages team play and smart team compositions, as you look to defend the giant duck and his tiny dancer. These two modes were easily the highlight of my time with Foam Stars, and came in stark contrast to the third multiplayer mode, Happy Bath Survival, which fails to offer the same level of tension or team play. Half of each team is stripped of their hero abilities and must assist the other two players with basic weaponry alone by painting the floor for them in what is a relatively dull arena shootout. It's disappointing because it sidelines the characters for stretches of time, as their usually tide-turning abilities can be combined to devastating effect in both Smash the Star and Rubber Duck Party. Each of the eight heroes is equipped with their own weapon type, abilities, and superstar skills. My favourite is the speedy Agito, who allowed me to dive under the foam, sneak around the back, and then erupt above the enemy in a shower of bubbles before finishing up with a shotgun full of foam. They're a great flanking option with a powerful superstar skill that unleashes a homing shark that explodes upon impact. Number one. Others I had fun with included Mel T, who, despite sounding like a long lost member of the Spice Girls, is in fact an ice cream loving young lady who deals big damage thanks to explosive skills and a rocket propelled foam cannon. In truth, I had a good time with all eight of the characters, and can see where each will hold their value in different game modes, especially when teamed up with other heroes that offer synergistic opportunities. There's a level of charm to each two, which carries over into the maps themselves. Each showcases a different part of Bar Vegas, and is visually distinct from one another and crucially is well constructed with gameplay first in mind. They offer interesting architecture and varying levels of verticality, as well as obstacles such as the giant roaming roulette ball found circling Fomiopatra's crazy wheel. In a time when so many shooters are militarized in their presentation and seemingly afraid to embrace colour, it's welcoming to be barraged by it at every turn in Foam Stars, which successfully marries Nintendo's charm with the panache of Persona. The same can be said for the soundtrack, which delivers track after track of catchy tunes that wouldn't sound out of place in an Atlas RPG. I enjoyed my time with Foam Stars then, and hope you will too, but I just can't help but fear for its long-term appeal due to the recent fate many live service games have met. Both free and premium season battle passes will be available throughout the first year of Foam Stars life with new cosmetics, characters, maps, and modes promised, but all of which are a mystery at this point. It's free at launch on PlayStation Plus, which will definitely give it an initial boost with millions of PlayStation players being able to download it for free. It's a strategy the likes of Rocket League and 
and Fall Guys enjoyed great success with, but it didn't have the same effect on Destruction All-Stars, a game I reviewed and thought was a fun enough time, but sadly one that didn't take off. I just hope that Foam Stars doesn't suffer a similar fate and finds its audience, as it's shaping up to be a genuinely fun and family-friendly hero shooter. For more from Foam Stars, why not check out the latest trailer or a full match of gameplay?